So you've installed a new aftermarket amplifier, but what are all these dials and settings? How can we properly tune an amplifier and adjust settings like the gain control and crossovers? Well, in this video, I'm not only going to show you multiple different ways to do the process, but I'm also going to allow you to hear what some of the changes in these settings sound like. I'm Mark, and I'd like to welcome you to Car Audio Fabrication. Here on this channel, I help you learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. Let's dive right in. So before we get started going through the tuning process, I wanna show you guys my setup here so that you understand what we're working with. So first off, we have the Car Audio Fabrication Integration Test Center. This is basically a a stock radio system pulled out of a vehicle. You can see we have the factory head unit, we have the factory premium amplifier right here, and then we also have a car battery. So again, basically a stock audio system outside of the vehicle, and I've integrated our new aftermarket amplifier to it. In order to show you guys this process, I'm gonna be using the Audio Control LC-4.800. This is a four channel amplifier, four times 125 watts at four ohms or 200 watts at two ohms. The amplifier is of course also powered by our car battery. And then we have the signal going into the amplifier on the speaker level inputs, which is connected to these, which are connected to the factory premium amplifier. Our speaker outputs from this amplifier are connected to these two bookshelf speakers. Now this is an RTA or a real-time analyzer and it's not necessarily required for this process, but I just have it because I wanna show you guys a little bit more in depth what's going on. Now audio control amplifiers have a few extra settings, but the main settings that you're gonna see on any aftermarket amplifier are gain controls, crossover controls, and then auxiliary level controls. Let's start with our tuning process for the first setting here, the gain control. Now I talked about this in a recent video, but the gain control is not a volume knob. Let's say that as we go through the process for setting this gain on this amplifier, that the setting ends up being about halfway. That does not mean that we're only using half of the amplifier power. We're still using 100% of the amplifier power, but rather what we're doing is we are level matching our amplifier to our source head unit. The intention behind setting our gain properly is we wanna make sure that we don't introduce clipping and that we don't introduce distortion into the audio signal. This here, in this case, is our source head unit, but it could also be an aftermarket radio, it could be a cell phone, whatever the source happens to be. Now there's a couple different ways to set the gain. I'm gonna show you two different ways. Let's get started with number one right now. Now since for this video, we're setting up our mids and high amplifier, I have a CD within the head unit here that has an 1000 hertz test tone. I'm gonna turn up the volume really quick so you guys can get an idea what it sounds like. Now you guys heard what one kilohertz or a thousand hertz sounds like. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to unplug our speaker wires. On our source unit, I'm gonna turn up the volume to about three quarters of its max level. Now while I'm at it, I also wanna make sure that none of the bass boost is turned up, none of the mid or the treble is turned up. Everything is nice and flat. If you have any bass boost settings on your head unit, you wanna turn them all down. Additionally, if you have a bass boost knob, you wanna make sure it's turned all the way up. The reason we turn up the knob all the way is when we're setting the gain, we wanna make it so that we can obviously go down from there, but we don't wanna ever accidentally turn up past the level that the gain was set at because it can introduce clipping and distortion. Next, we need to do some very simple math and we're going to use this equation. What we're trying to do is find a voltage. We know that our amplifier can produce 125 watts at four ohms. So if we plug those values into the formula, we know that four ohms is equal to the resistance and we know that the power is 125 watts. So four times 125 equals 500. Now we need to take the square root of 500 to get the voltage. So if we do the square root of 500, we can see that it's 22.36. Now, if you don't have a fancy calculator, you can literally type into Google square root of 500 and it will give you this value. So we know that the voltage V that we are looking for is 22.36. I've got a digital multimeter here and I've set it to AC volts and I'm going to take the positive and negative lead and connect them to these speaker outputs. So you can see right now we're measuring about 1.63 volts and we need to get that up to 22.4 approximately. So if I start adjusting the gain, So I'm still just carefully adjusting. I wanna get it up to 
There we go, 22.3. So there we go, we've done the first step of the process. We've set our gain using a digital multimeter. But I told you guys this was example number one of how to actually do this process. But there are a few problems with using the multimeter to set your gain. First off, we made the assumption that when we turn this up to three quarters volume, that that would not be distorted. And that's just an assumption. And I'll be honest, a lot of times for factory head units, anything maybe even past a half volume starts to introduce distortion. So we very well may have distortion already on this system. We also assumed with the amplifier when we did our calculations that we weren't going to have distortion at the max output of the amplifier. Now with reputable manufacturers like audio control, you're going to be okay, but with some other amplifier manufacturers, that may not be the case. A better way to set our gains and check for distortion is to use a purpose-built tool like the SMD Distortion Detector DD1 or an oscilloscope. I haven't touched anything since I set the gain using the multimeter, and let's turn on the DD1 real quick and let's see if we have distortion. You can see that by this red indicator light right here, we do in fact have distortion. So this is one of the main reasons that while you can get away with setting the amplifier gain with a digital multimeter, you should try to use a purpose-driven tool. So to properly set the gain using the DD1, I'm going to start with turning the gain all the way down on the amplifier. And now on the source unit, I'm going to turn up the volume until we see the distortion light turn on. So there it is on right there. If we back off one, it's off. Turn up one again, it's there. And we'll wanna make a note that I should never turn up the volume past this point on the radio. So now that the radio is turned up to its maximum undistorted volume, I can again adjust the gain on the amplifier. Watch over here for the distortion light to turn on. There it is right there. So I'm gonna back off slightly. There we have it. Now, before we move on to tuning the crossover setting, I wanna take a quick second to thank my channel sponsor, Audio Control. What's unique about the Audio Control amplifiers is their added functionality to allow you to integrate into a factory system. Let's say that we're adding this to a factory system where we have warning chimes that come through some of the speakers. We can connect those inputs to the front high connections here. By doing that, we can actually attenuate and turn down the warning signals that would otherwise be amplified. And if you've ever installed an amplifier Fire into a system that has warning chimes and they've been amplified, you know just how annoyingly loud it can possibly be. So this helps solve that issue. Also, many times with a factory audio system, what the car manufacturers will do is they'll make it so that as you turn the volume up, the bass level will actually roll off. And they do this to protect their cheap, inexpensive stock speakers. Audio Control's AccuBase technology allows us to restore that bass roll off so that we're not missing anything. If you'd like to learn more about those features and the other features that Audio control has in their amplifiers to make good sound great, you can check out some of my other videos up here. So to help you understand how to tune the crossover on your amplifier, I'm going to start with showing you visually and then I'll allow you to hear the difference. So right now on the radio I'm playing what's called pink noise, and pink noise is equal output at all frequencies. Now the reason it's not completely flat is because the signal is coming from a factory premium amplifier, so it's already applied some sort of EQ curve, that's why it's all over the place. This is something that we'd correct with a digital signal processor. If you're not familiar with that is, I'll put a link on screen. But first I'm gonna show you guys a high pass crossover. A high pass crossover means that we're allowing everything higher than a certain value to go past and go to the speakers. Right now I have it set so that everything higher than 30 hertz, which is right about here, goes to the speakers. Now I'm gonna turn this up all the way. I'm gonna turn it to 300 hertz. So you can see all these values have dropped away. 300 hertz is about right here. You can see that only frequencies above 300 hertz are going to go past. So I'm playing some music quietly over the speakers right now, but what we're going to do is we currently have this crossover set to about 300 hertz. It's a high pass crossover. It's letting everything above 300 hertz go past. I'm going to turn the music up and you're going to notice that it doesn't really have any bass or any mid bass. And you're going to listen and you're going to hear that as I turn the high pass crossover down, in other words, as I'm letting lower frequencies go past, you're going to start to be able to hear them through the speaker.
Now a low pass crossover is basically the same idea, but now we're letting everything lower than a certain value go past. Let's take a listen with music and hear how this actually sounds. So as you can imagine, a low pass crossover comes in handy for something like a subwoofer because you don't want to hear the vocals out of the subwoofer, you only want to hear the subwoofer bass. Now just as a quick guideline, you're typically going to have your low pass crossover for something like a subwoofer set around 80 hertz, and you're also going to have your high pass crossover for your speakers set at something like 80 hertz. These are just basic starting points for tuning your crossovers. For more of an advanced crossover setting tutorial, I have another video that I've made that you can check out up here. So now you know the basics of tuning tuning amplifier settings. If you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. When you subscribe, you'll be notified when I release future car audio videos. If you would like to check out some of the other videos that I've already made, you can do so here on screen. If you'd like to learn more about audio control and their amplifier lineup, you can check out audiocontrol.com. And a special thanks goes out to John, Brian, John, Ali, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, Truman, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Big thanks to all those guys for helping work with me to make these videos. Thanks for watching.